The value of most business is in the data. Our SQL Server has many databases, and each database may have many objects. If a critical server with two databases on it went down, what happens? Well, let's say that one of the databases ran our e-commerce site, and the other was a test database with no immediate revenue importance. Knowing this ahead of time, maybe our high availability solution should focus on making this one database highly available rather than making the entire server highly available. Maybe we are a hosting company and all of the databases on our SQL Server have a SLA or a service level agreement to stay up with five nines. In other words, they can only be down for just over five minutes a year. In that case, every database is critical with the same agreement. And we would want an instance level, also called a server level, high availability solution. If there's only one database on your server to protect with high availability, then you would want a database level high availability solution. In either case, do we want the high availability solution to detect its own failure and run the redundant system automatically, or do we want to just get an alert and then we make the switch over? Some of the existing high availability options allow for automatic failover, and some require that the process be done manually. What does your business need? These are good questions to put in front of the company's stakeholders before implementing any high availability solution. Before we do a deep dive into Always On, we will discuss briefly about various high availability and disaster recovery solutions that were available before the SQL Server 2012 release. Most importantly, we will discover what is and isn't possible with failover clustering, log shipping, transaction replication, and database mirroring. And that was Chapter 2.1 on Uptime Requirements. Our next item, Chapter 2.2, Failover Clustering Concepts.